This week, we'll start exploring atmospheric heights, different ways to calculate them or find them from data, and make a rudimentary climatology. Welcome to another MetPi Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. On this week's MetPi Monday, I want to look at atmospheric heights. We often talk about a 500 millibar chart, but what altitude in the atmosphere are we actually looking at, and how does that change throughout the year, or with location? So we're going to make a rudimentary climatology, first based on sounding data, and then we'll explore some other ways that we can look at heights in future MetPy Mondays. So for now, let's do some imports. We know we're going to request sounding data, so we're going to need date time, and probably time delta if we're going to do a climatology. For metpy.units, we're going to import the units registry and our pandas data frame to unit arrays helper. We're going to import metpy.calc as mpcalc, our standard shorthand. From Siphon's simple web service, we're going to import the Iowa State Upper Air Archive. We're going to import matplotlib so we can make a quick plot of our results and see if they make sense. And we're going to import numpy. So the first thing we're going to need to do is write a function to calculate from a sounding where the 500 millibar level is. And we might add some things to that in the future, like we might want to know surface temperatures or dew points. But for now, let's just stick with the 500 millibar level. I'm going to call my function get daily stats. And don't forget your doc string. Get basic stats from a sounding. So it takes our data frame which right now is going to be a pure data frame. And let's subset that data frame to our data frame below 500 millibars. And we know that's going to be a data frame where the pressure is greater than or equal to 500. Remember, we haven't attached units yet, so we're still dealing with just plain old integers. All right, now we're going to attach some units. Data frame below 500, we're going to use the pandas data frame to unit arrays helper, and we're going to get the units attribute from our original data frame DF because we haven't used that yet. All right, we also know that the height of the 500 millibar layer in our data frame below 500 height column, or data series, or in this case, it's really a united array, is going to be the maximum. So I could use something like numpy's nan max. And we'll return height 500. So that gets us our most basic statistic, which is what is the height of the 500 millibar level from the sounding data? Okay, so now we can actually go get our data and use our fancy new function. I'm gonna create some dates. I want to get data for three years from three different days of the month. We'll just space things out a little bit. So we have a little more than 12 data points to represent our year of height variation. I'm gonna use a list comprehension. This is one of the few cases where nested for loops in a list comprehension are okay in my mind because it's pretty clear what we're doing and it reads as one line of code. So I'm going to be appending to my list a date time of a year, a month, and a day. Remember in a list comprehension, what we're appending comes first. And I'm going to close my square bracket so I don't miss it. I'm going to do that for a month in range 1 to 13. For a year in, and I'll just give a little list here of 2019, 2020, 2021, for day in, let's say, the 1st, the 15th, and the 25th day of each month. 
and we'll close our comprehension. If we look at dates, we see that, yes, we indeed get what we wanted. So now for each of those dates, we're going to need to loop, try to get our sounding, and then we're going to need to calculate our statistics from that sounding, which in this case is just the heights. So for now, I'm going to create an empty list, heights from sounding. And I'm going to create a empty list for the sounding dates. And then we'll start our loop for D and dates. I'm going to print the date. Let's go get our data from Iowa State Upper Air. And maybe I'll define a station up here just to keep my code nice and clean. And we could use something like Denver. Okay, so we've got our station. And now we're going to get our height from our sounding. Get daily stats, pass it our data frame. Heights from sounding, we're going to append that information. Sounding dates, we're going to append our date D. And that should be all we need, but we know that sounding data isn't always available. In fact, there are some launches that just fail or don't happen for one reason or another, or maybe the data's gone. We need to build a little bit of some error checking in here. We're going to do that in a pretty elementary way. I'm going to use a try statement. And after we do that, we're going to break. What are we going to break from? We're going to break from a loop that is trying multiple different days here. So I'm going to put another loop for I in range 5. And we'll tab that in. Which means we're going to try five potential sounding days here. Except, exception as E. Generally, it's not a good idea to catch all exceptions. I am going to display this one so we at least know what was going wrong. I'm going to say there's a data issue. We're going to add a day and print the exception. The day is going to be equal to the day plus time delta. Days equal one. And then we're going to continue, meaning go back up and go again. So what we're trying to do here is if we don't have data on the first, let's try the second, and let's try the third, and let's try the fourth. And we're going to try that five times until we give up on getting data. So now let's go ahead and run this cell and see what else we have to address. So see, this is why we want to print the exception. It says we have a problem with Iowa State Upper Air. That's because we're trying to create an instance of the class here. We didn't actually call a class method. And what we need to do is call the class method request data. So let's try that again. We get a warning from pandas, but that's okay. It says no units attribute attached to pandas data frame and call units not given. Okay, so we've got an issue with attaching our units, which means it's back up here in our daily stats function. So what happened? Well, if we look at the function signature for pandas data frame to unit arrays, we can stop this from running and unnecessarily pinging the server. It takes the data frame and column units. So what we didn't do, we gave it units, but we didn't give it our data frame df below 500. Now let's try again. We've got a pandas warning, but I do see successful queries here. Okay, so that's run. We can scroll down to the bottom. And let's look at something like heights from sounding. And we have data there. So we've got something to work with. 
Let's make a quick plot, and I'm going to use, again, a couple of list comprehensions for just a quick, dirty plot. Since we've got data from multiple years, and I want to overlay them by day of year to make a climatology, we're going to use the Julian date. Unfortunately, the easiest way to get the Julian date that I know of from a date time object is to use integer on the string formatted time of our date time D formatted as Julian day. So we're turning a date time object into a string for Julian day and then casting that to an integer for each D in sounding dates. And then I'm going to plot the height in feet because I can think in feet a little better than meters when it comes to atmospheric heights. So we're going to call the dot two method to the unit feet for an individual height h in our heights from sounding. So now we've made a couple of lists that we can actually work with for plotting. If we scatter Julian date and height in feet, we can see that there's a very clear seasonal trend as we go to the summer months the 500 millibar height rises, getting down to about 18,000 feet in the winter and up to uh, pretty close to 20,000 feet in the summers. So this is the trend that we would expect. It makes sense. The data are actually quite tightly grouped. So I encourage you to explore going further north or further south, tweaking the climatology. Is it the same for a 12Z sounding as a 0Z sounding, or are they all in the same noise band? and just play with this a little bit and think about how else we can calculate atmospheric heights. I hope that you found this useful. I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.